What's going on guys? Welcome back to a new day and a new video. I'm jumping right into this engine bay and the plan is to get it sanded down, prepped, and hopefully painted so I can start putting it all back together again. As you saw, I taped off the areas I didn't want to get dust, water, etc. into, and then using a wire wheel, knocked down all that surface rust you saw previously. So I'm going to start sanding this thing, starting with the crash bar, remove it, and then keep sanding from the rad support all the way back to the firewall. So I decided to spare y'all from the repetitive sanding, and as you can see, a lot of the sanding has been done. Uh, to get to this point, I started with 220 grit and feathered that out with 320 grit on a central pneumatic air grinder with a 2 inch Velcro soft pad. In the tighter areas, I stuck the paper to this small soft sanding block and took care of the rest that way. I am going to be filling in these weld points with Bondo plastic metal, um, and then hitting it up with some glaze to clean up the towers just a little bit. I'm not trying to do the whole bay, just these highly visible areas. Once that's smooth, I'm going to hit the bare metal with etching primer, and then follow it up with filler primer. The filler primer is down in the high visible areas and once it dries I'll wet sand it with 400 to 600 grit scuff pads, wash the bay down, mask everything off, wipe it all down one last time with diluted mineral spirits, and then we'll start laying some color. To get the paint part of this project done, I picked up some Rust-Oleum Gloss Black 2X Plus Primer for the color, and to finish it off, I'm going to use my favorite clear, the Spray Max 2K in the can. Well, this did not go as expected. Uh, I'm going to be transparent here like I always do and own my mistakes. This is my first time spraying with the 2-in-1 stuff and I should have done some test spraying first. 
It's way thicker than the normal Rust-Oleum paints I've used in the past, and as a result, I definitely ran this stuff in a few unfortunately noticeable spots, like this corner here, that flat spot there, again, this corner here, and that flat spot right there. So, uh, yeah, I can't move on with these runs the way they are. So now i got to sand the runs out with 600 grit, scuff down the rest of the engine bay with 800 grit, and try this one more time. So after several days of intensive labor, the bay was completely stripped, all the masking was removed, everything's been sanded, reprepped, and remasked, but this time using tape and aluminum foil. I found the foil actually conforms around the objects nicely and takes up way less tape, which is always a plus. So I think with that said, we are good to go. Everything's washed, wiped down with mineral spirits, and blown dry with the compressor. So let's go ahead and get this thing painted again, hopefully for the last time. And there it is, guys. So is it 100% perfect? No. No, it's not. Does it have some orange peel? <laughs> yeah, it does. Are there some spots that could have been sanded smoother? <laughs> Absolutely. But I don't care about any of that because it's going to be a daily driven car, and the original paint was horrendous. Now, when I put the engine in, I can feel confident that not only is the paint going to last, but it's going to look damn good, and I did it myself. So with that said, there is still a ways to go. I got to get paint the bracketry get the hardware stripped and repainted so they all blend and match the fresh black paint, and then get all the components reinstalled before I can even get the motor put in. So I'm going to stop here with this video. I hope you found the video helpful, entertaining, or maybe you just learned something. If you are liking the content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see all of you again on the next one.